a natural object. Mm-hmm. It's an unnatural object. I think that it was part of, uh, and it was part, maybe a part of something else, and it was then moved in to this specific spot now um, to be used for a number of different reasons, right? Um, uh, as a as an ampl- amplification system we're, we're through Saturn, which we, like, we can talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, but I, I believe main I think there's multiple bases on the moon. There's multiple Nazi bases on the moon. There's mm-hmm. multiple Draco bases on the moon. They they seem they seem to be able to get on. Um, the, the the fourth Reich and the, the Dracos uh, to some extent they seem to be able to get them to some extent um, they there's the soul ca- there's the soul catching machine which is um, there which is on the moon and which is and then uh, the, the amnesia so you go through through the machine um, I sort of have a weird sort of feeling of remembering remembering it and remembering the feeling of it and not what I'm wanting to pull away. I, I remember mm-hmm. I remember being uh, killed before. So, but uh, you don't get a full life review. You're supposed. It's everything is wrong with this whole system setup. You're supposed to have a life review. You're supposed to look if you were doing this mm-hmm. th- this way. Look at what you've done. Look at it. There's, there's no bad or good. There's no judgment. There's no judgment. Like look. You can ignore that here. part. Now you're banished to here, banished to there because. It's it, we're all here trying to learn and understand. So then you then you have it. You have have a life full life review. Then you and then you come back and choose your body. Choose what you your higher self. Okay, well he goes into all that new agey stuff. But the interesting thing there is that uh, that's another you know guy talking about a soul catching machine on the moon. Well, uh, my experience is 1991. I had that experience of somehow traveling to the moon. I think it was, uh, I can't exactly tell you how I traveled there. Um, out of body, vision, whatever, but it was, I was kind of transported there. And I was writing about it. I was writing a um, story called Cities of Light based on that because I saw there, there was a, a crystal city and and there was a I might ask uh, Trish if you're there could you turn the light down please I'm thank you uh, I, that's really glaring in my eye so I have to you know this is kind of a heavy topic but so I was writing about the nuclear bomb and I was writing about Lucifer I didn't know it at the time, but I was writing about Lucifer in the form of a character back in um, in World War II, who was, you know, in the disguise of a roommate of this guy that was shell shocked in the war, and they sent him up to uh, up to <clears throat> somewhere in England, like you know, near, near Dover, near uh, the. Cornish coast or somewhere up there and it was run by a uh, Catholic organization and the head priest was a man named Father Barrett this man's name was Blake I forget his last name but his roommate was named Joey Light (laughs) so um, and it's all about how somehow this the progression of this character Blake from that in being in a kind of a Catholic run mental hospital after he discovers there that um, the priest and the, the you know various other people are doing satanic rituals in the basement now mind you this is 1991 1991 and they're in the basement and it's the you know the, the rituals and then the, then Joey starts revealing himself and, and and flipping Blake out. Blake is going nuts. And uh, I suppose I named him after William Blake, perhaps. And he's going crazy. And then they appear in another dimension. There's other alternate dimensions there in that particular property. And in one, he's <clears throat> strung up on a cross in hell, 
and there's all these hellish things going on around him and he's on the being crucified. And Joey says, come on, that's for fools. Come with me. And so he gets him off of the cross and eventually, you know, he, in some altered state, he's somehow uh, transferred to a hospital in, in, uh, in Maryland. Yes. Yes. I I am. Well, that's because I'm being suppressed. So whether it's Spreaker, YouTube, Podbean, uh, it automatically goes to my page unless they suppress it. Unless they don't want people to know about this topic. Which, by the way, has been happening more and more increasingly. So, you know, you might say a prayer for us that, you know, that that, that this is all supernatural stuff. This isn't being run by, you know, some conscious being behind a computer somewhere saying, I think I'll mess that up. It's supernatural. It's like it's it's like the demonic, the demon in the wires type of thing. And by the way, uh, I did get a new wire. Finally, I gave up on the Proco. I went with a Mogami Gold. Mogami Gold to plug in the iPad and then plug into the mixer here. And uh, because I use Mogami on my synthesizers and guitar and things. So, you know, that's the the best there is, right? It's like a $100 wire that you can buy for, you know, 10 cents at the, uh, right, in a a travel stop. (laughs) Except it's hopefully more quality. Uh, Yeah, so I've, you know, we talked about being suppressed last time. I suppose in some way, My whole life has been suppressed and um, it's because the Satan runs the world, you know, the satanic people, the willing slaves of Satan, of the system, if you will, they are in a hive mind configuration and they make sure to block anything that isn't of them because they know that if they don't, they're also parasites because they gave their souls up. So that's going on upon the earth, but it's being regulated. It all begins with the recycling job of souls. And I've tried to, you know, I shied away from speaking about this because I don't want, there's people that are, you know, friends I have that are Christian and very fundamental, fundamentalist, if you will, very, very much, if it's not in the Bible, it doesn't exist. And I've kept my powder dry on what I know to be true. Excuse me. Okay, so what I know to be true, because I don't want to offend anyone, and I mean not, you know, offend them, meaning to turn them away from the Lord, because it's the Lord that's the key in the end to getting through this thing. But I just want you to understand how thick this is. Now, this man, this guy Max here was talking about, he talks about everything like he's knowledgeable about everything. I don't quite believe it. He might have picked this up from John Lear. He may be a total liar. I don't know. I just found it. It, it triggered me because someone sent this in the email and it's like, so it's not just John Lear and John Lear, I believe is credible is credible. Um, but most Christians don't like him because he's not in the Bible. I understand. It's just very complicated. The Bible can be used to suppress people's knowledge as well. It's not just there to liberate people. It's there to control people as well. Understand that before you, you know, get too far into it. The fundamentalist view for me is wrong. I mean, I, your mileage may vary. For you, it may be right. I get a great deal of inspiration from Scripture, and that's really all I refer to is Scripture because all my answers come from there about, you know, about pretty much everything. But in the wrong hands, with the wrong pastor, most of these pastors in the system, I mean, that you're talking a lot of blood drinkers, flesh eaters people that do the rituals but anyway this is going to be a little bit of a non-linear approach so you're going to have to bear with me and you're going to have to listen up you know so if you're you know you're going to have to listen because i can't do this in a straightforward way so you're going to have to tie it together yourselves okay so i'm going to have you do a little bit of work here so i'm writing this this uh, story which begins as a novel called cities of light because i was so moved by this experience that i had on the moon. And the first thing was the council of elders. There's a council of elders like in this crystal building that's made of crystal in another dimension, I think not this dimension. You couldn't see it. If you, if you went to the moon right now, you probably couldn't see it. But then again, I can't be completely sure on that. 
And they, like the gods of Olympus, were running things on earth, you know? And it's funny, when I was, uh, at the same time, I was having, you know, experiences with UFOs. I was having downloads of um, formula, mathematical formula and equations in a script and language that I don't, the only, elsewhere I've seen it is like script that's written on the side of UFOs where they say they found a script. I was writing like that as if natural. I did several paintings t- to reflect those symbols and characters, but I was afraid to find out more. I just knew that whatever I was downloading was probably uh, not good for me. But it led, okay, that experience and this experience on the moon led to me writing a, a, a novel, started as a novel called Cities of Light. It also connects back with, with New Mexico, though I was living in Los Angeles at the time. And the Cities of Light morphed into a story about Lucifer. So this whole thing is connected. Okay, and um, so they were the ones in charge, I suppose, of the soul. I called it a soul scalping. I was the one that coined the term soul scalping back then, you know, with respect to this machine. It it wasn't published or anything. I mean, it was just I coined the term. I heard it later. You know, they may have recoined it. You know, I'm not trying to take credit for that. But at that time, I was I thought I was crazy with this. In other words, I saw there was a tunnel of light. And then I realized maybe I'm dead. You know what I mean? I'm dead and I'm gone to the moon. And I'm in this, I see this tunnel of light for what it is. It's a beautiful tunnel of light. Waves of love and emotion coming over you, okay? All the, your dogs, your cats, your, your friends, your family, the people that committed suicide and all the tragedies and the, and the cancers and all the people that are gone. There they are, you're, the people you really truly love to greet you and you want to go with them into the tunnel. Now, this thing was being uh, run by what you would call gray aliens. That's, that's the best description I can have of them. They were, you know, the grays. They were running the tunnel of light. And <clears throat> um, then I was shown... It had to be God showing me this stuff because, you know, but at the time I was just, you know, pretty out there. I was, you know, very, uh, you know, unable to really put it together and then share it, you know. And plus there was no internet or anything at that time. I know it's hard to imagine a world without internet and with with pay phones and things. But yeah, you know. Anyway, so, so I was aware that these people were being recycled they go into this thing and they're being recycled into, you know, uh, another round of life upon the earth. In other words, this catch, catches them and then they get recycled. Then when they're born, they're, they're clamped on and they harvest the consciousness of the beings. They, get, they feed on the beings that are born and they keep them controlled from cradle to grave. You know, with, uh, you know, our religions, our entertainment, all this stuff is their creation. And um, it's all designed to get us to look outward and beyond for answers, where the real answers are within, so that we never, ever find out who we are, what we are. We come in here with our memory wiped, or almost wiped, because I remember quite a few things. You know, for example, I know this is not my first rodeo. I don't. And I know a lot of things about other kinds of incarnation, like multiple incarnation, multidimensional incarnation, infinite incarnation. I know about being a co-creator with God. I know about all these things. I know about spiritual warfare. I know about angelic warfare. I know exactly how to do it because I went up against the UFOs that were plaguing me and defeated them. And I don't know many people that can say that. This was out of my own knowledge, not in a book, not in the Bible. Not in, I just knew what to do. I had done it a million times before. This was not my first rodeo. Look where it's leading me. No one's talking to me about Jesus. No one's talking about anything. This is, where, this is how it's going. I'm doing paintings at the time. We have, a, we have a visitor. We have a gray alien coming into the bedroom. They're trying to abduct me out the window, uh, scared to death with the black eyes looking right through me. Uh, that experience then triggered a memory of satanic ritual abuse in my family. 
that was held next door uh, on, a, on a street we lived in in Los Angeles and orchestrated by the women, the sewing circle, and the children were there being indoctrinated by adult males having anal sex with the kids and oral sex, you know, with children that were, you know, maybe five or six years old. And the women are sitting there like, oh, hum, like it's like they do it a million times a day. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's just like cooking or doing the laundry or, or this. That was triggered from that alien. I confronted my mother about this and she broke down crying and screaming. In other words, you know, then, then she put a face back on. I don't know what personality. Personality number 35.837 then kicked in. And she, we ne- there was never talked about again, but. Trish was also a witness. I was living in sin with Trish at the time. So she was there in the bed with me when this thing came in. And I had to have her. I remember I couldn't go out to the kitchen to get a glass of water. I was scared to death. You see, the thing, when it looks into you, when it goes into you like that, it triggers a fear that I think is on purpose. That is a fear that it incapacitates people. It's not like I wasn't being courageous. It's that it's some kind of device, some kind of like an electronic signal that they put into you through those eyes, something like that, that digs into you, trips that cord in you. And you can't, you know, it's like if you got an electric shock. Okay. So it trips that, that fear, that tremendous fear. And I couldn't go out to the kitchen. I couldn't, I just couldn't. Then the UFO, there were flybys and, and stuff like that happening at the same time. And I started painting they painted the eyes and then I ruined the painting, I think on purpose because I, the painting, I captured it and it was scaring the, and then I wanted to improve it a little bit. And then, and then I lost that, that I had a painting that actually did what I said. If you looked at it, it would do that to you. If you, if you were uh, an abductee and, and uh, this is very real, by the way, the whole abductee thing is very real. It's all real. You can't just say, well, these are just demons because there's all kinds of varieties of these things. You know, were the guys in the councils, are they demons? Are these demons? They're all demons. What does the word demon mean then? It means it applies to all these very differentiated beings. Is that what it is? Demon is kind of a catch-all for everything. See, that's the problem with, um, I never could get any answers from people. You know, I tried to explain to the, you know, the church shushed me and they didn't want me to say a word about any of this. This stuff goes on in secret. Uh and I know I had people say, well, it's going to keep happening. You know, and this wasn't my first time with, with fighting with the UFOs. I mean, we, I fought with them in the ocean and, uh, you know, following me around on Sunset Boulevard, leading to other satanic rituals. The UFO always would lead. And I had a triangle one, saucers, triangle, those various shapes. They would always lead somehow to a satanic ritual. They were overseeing them. Or in in a mental hospital, they were the you know that in this case they possessed the doctors and the nurses and all the people were involved in harvesting the children, getting them harvestable. And it was like a, there were people there in human dis, that looked as human, but I knew they were from outer space. I knew they were not outer space or from a lab somewhere, a lab on some kind of other alternate reality, whatever you know. Um, but anyway, this thing on the moon, I didn't look around much I, um, I i was inside the room where these well, i called them elders at the time all in white you know very very you know the classic aryan you know that you that is described on the ships very very you know the the, the gods of the nazis perhaps okay so there they are in this crystal and they're and everything is they're like angels but perhaps they're fallen angels i don't know you know i they didn't do anything to me I saw uh, that nothing happens upon the earth without their being involved in it. At the same time, if we say God is sovereign, well, then God is ruling over them too. It's ruling over all of it. So we, we could just have that as a proviso here that just applies to everything. But meanwhile, th- this is the truth. Okay, so I, then I've heard other people talking about something similar, about bases on the moon, cities on the moon, and I don't know about crystal, a crystal building like that, but they were also somehow controlling the soul scalping device that gets people to go into the tunnel of light. And then they're put on spin dry (laughs) or spin cycled and uh, they don't get anywhere. These people then are, 
you know, um, it's not like they they go on like some people have done, you know, to me, it's like necromancy. It's neither here. I never believe people that talked about the the realm on the other side, you know, death, because the death is here. This is a realm. There's a realm of death dimension next to and intertwined with the dimension of life here on the earth. So there's the realm of the dead here. There's Hades here. Well, my proof is that people who pass through with their consent, because it's all about, we have free will, thank God, right? And let me back up a little before we get to any kind of uh, doctrine. And so we have this moon thing and these two extremes. And then I was so vexed and, and, and horrified by what I had seen that I, I started writing, and the, the writing was about Cities of Light in the novel. It wasn't... God, I hate that. I hate that. That's a, computer keeps going to a... I keep vowing to fix it. You know, now it goes to a screensaver, right, when I'm saying something, and I feel I have to tap it on or I might lose the broadcast. So I'm... Again, you know, it's uh, the failure of technology constantly. But I, I keep working it, working around it, working, trying to use it, you know. But it's all broken as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, so so then Earth, you know, is that led to writing this thing, Cities of Light. And it was really going to be about this, this crystal city on the moon and these people that I saw there. And they were human looking, but they had all in white raiment, all white raiment, just like it says in the Bible, you know. And then, um, you know, so I'm writing it, and then it, it somehow the novel hits the wall. I couldn't go on and write another chapter of the novel, and it started turning into this screenplay. And it took on the form of a, of a script. And then in comes the character Joey Light. You see where this is all leading. And in comes the atom bomb and all these, you know, these Japanese Buddhist monks who all seem to have a premonition about this. There's something that really drew their attention about the bomb being dropped in Nagasaki and Hiroshima <clears throat> and the, um, the, 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 the waves of light, the connection of that the splitting of the atom with Lucifer himself in the form of this character, Joey Light, who was taunting uh, Blake, who was shell-shocked, now back in town and then back with his wife and back with everything. And I think he finds out that he really, his father doesn't accept him, his, his wife doesn't accept him, She's taken up with another man. And uh, and then all this stuff happens. I've, my memory is not quite clear. I have the, the screenplay, actually. It's too good for Hollywood. It would be, um, you know, the best movie ever made. But So that's why they won't do it. Because uh, <laughs> it, it'd be, it's like my 80th screenplay that I'd written, right? I'm sorry, it's really honed and pop. I mean, look at the story elements. I would be there on day. I'd, I'd go see it five times, you know, already, just knowing what's there. Uh, so anyway, so somehow he winds up in Mexico as a healer. He's trying to get away from this Joey Light character. He just hates this guy. The guy just keeps showing up. He's like a, a buddy in the, in the army, but he keeps laughing and joking and taunting him that he can't escape. He cannot escape. Blake can't escape from this Joey Light. He just can't do it. And when he thinks he's on his own trying to get away and everything, it's all being somehow Joey Light keeps showing up. And, and somehow he can't get away from the influence of, if you will, Satan, who continues. So he becomes this kind of priest of a Mexican village. And he's got all these, like, he's, he's built this entire altar with things like airplanes and, 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 and uh, you know, little trains. And you know, it's like a big collage. And he has his son. And eventually the son comes down to Mexico to find him and says, what are you doing here? You become some weird, you know, out of your mind and the, the, the village. But the thing about it is, is he heals the children. He heals everybody in the village. And so they love him because he heals, you know, and he's, this time he's an old man with a long hair and beard. And, and the son wants to bring him back to rehabilitate him and all this. And then, you know, I'm missing like, you know, the whole middle of the story because I'm cutting to the end because I don't want to bore you and, and all that. And plus my memory doesn't, you know, I, I would have to refresh my memory on that screenplay. 
But anyway, um, so in the very end of the denouement, I suppose you could call it, is, you know, the son, you know, obviously leaves in disgust and they can't help him and he's just going to be the shaman, right? The, the native, the village shaman, if you will, who doesn't look much different from a, an, an evil Santeria high priest, which I just saw in a movie yesterday. Um, but he's got his own system, his own religion, that his own thing he does with these all these things which happen to be like little curios of, of, from World War II and little curios about the bomb and little curios about, you know, about uh, his, his wife and, uh, and his father and different things. And they're just horrified to find out what he's become and, and what, where he lives in a, in a, you know, obviously in a hovel and, and uh, the village takes care of him because his work is to heal the people in the village. And, um, you know, so then all of a sudden, Joey Light shows up again after the sun leaves in disgust. And he thinks he's been down there for 30, 40 years. He's been down there in that village healing people and he got away from Joey Light. But Joey Light shows up again. And he says, and he always flips him the Ace of Spades card. He always flips him the Ace of Spades. That's his card. That's his calling card. That's the devil's calling card, the Ace of Spades. And he flips in this ace of spades. He goes, you know, the light also heals as well as harms. In other words, a nuclear bomb harms. But then the power that uh, is being used to heal these children, the Joey Light character takes credit for, and it flips the old man out because he thought all this time he had a natural gift of being able to heal people. And then, uh, then, then it's usurped by Joey Light now. Maybe had he had Jesus, right? Uh, he, he he might have proclaimed that and 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 and, and shunned the devil and really been successful at getting rid of the devil, but he didn't, and so he wasn't. And it ends on that note: that look, you're using the light to heal. So usurping God's power, obviously, the light, you know, that it's coming from Him. And that, you know, inherent in that message is, and you will never, ever, ever get away. You'll never get away, Blake. You can go to the far reaches of, of, of a remote, you know, Mexican village buried in the wilderness somewhere, and you still will not escape. Not me. I'm still here. End of story. That was, you know, inspired. I didn't intend to write about a guy named Joey Light. You see, it just came in. I didn't intend to write about the nuclear bomb. It just came in. It all got inspired off of this moon thing and some other incidents, which were, you know, the, the alien visitation, the moon, the, um, the, the, the um, script that, uh, that was, I was suddenly writing in, the formulas, downloads. It was all very intense in this period. I'm not sure what exactly was going on or whatever i just know that there was a eventually i fought them them all of them and was successful i mean there'd still be a flyover like every once in a while there'd be a flyover and i'd see a guy in the ship i mean this is how close the, the sightings were i'd see it overhead and in, in the middle was like like you could lean over and see down through down to the ground kind of thing like through these windows you know, so like looking over a rail and then down and there's the ground. And, you know, I know this sounds funny and ridiculous and, and, and it, it could it be fantasy? I suppose it could have just been an illusion that was given to me. You know, I mean, I've, I've nothing is, I'm not saying anything is in cement here, but they're looking over and they're laughing at me and pointing at me like I'm stuck on the ground. Like I used to fly. I used to be you know, I used to be something. I used to be able to do stuff. But look at me, stuck on the ground. <laughs> stuck, a stupid human stuck on the ground. <laughs> you know, and now I know what the laughter is all about, having then kept on since 1991, kept on into the experience with the Lord, you know, and, and Jesus, and seen the power of the Almighty God deliver me from these people who claim that I would never get away from them. I would never be okay. Abductees were telling me, nope, if you've had this experience, you'll never get away from it. It will keep plaguing you. Not after I beat the living you-know-what out of them. How did I know how to do that? Where did that power come from? I had it. I had it. 
I summoned it from whatever, from whatever my experience is. But I mean, you know, I, they were throwing these, these wheels into my head. The, the, they were like wheel brain bombs, if you will, from a ship. And then I, I knew exactly what they were doing. So I threw them back and I threw so many at them that finally the ship just disappeared and then they all left and they all just went left at once and it was gone. And then I did not get uh, any more of these abduction experiences. And everyone told me, they said, oh no, you're going to have to go talk to somebody. You're going to have to be hypnotized. You're going to have to go through and uncover all this stuff. And, uh, you know, you might never get away from it. If they've, if they, if this is a generational thing, no, no, there you're, you're not going to get out of it. Well, I did because I beat the living, you know, what out of them. It was done in another dimension. I don't know how I had the knowledge to do that, but this all, all, it was all kind of, you know, surrounding this moon thing, leading to my own recovery of a memory of trauma, satanic ritual abuse that had been buried by the way, because that was like five years old. <clears throat> and um, then confirmed through Mommy Dearest. And, and then I really realized that, oh my God, and these people are our generational. Uh, what they do is, if you're a lamb and you're talking out of school about this stuff, what they used to do is just kill you. You know what I mean? But everyone would cover it up. The police would cover it up. The, the school uh, superintendent would cover it up, or rather the principal. The uh, other kids would cover it. Everybody would participate in the cover-up worldwide, 365, 24-7. That's the world you live in. Now, I have a unique perspective because I've been in the world you live in and seen exactly what world you live in. Uh, note, the, the track that uh, featured Kelly Rowley, which she did a fantastic job on, uh, on, you know, I, I definitely the right choice as acting that part and then singing, you know, almost like, <clears throat> almost like Mary Poppins at the end there when they finally um, reprogrammed her and they, she finally, it could also be taken that she died and they recycled her and she was put into a life with of ribbons and rainbows and oh, how nice, uh, you know, mission accomplished. Simulacra. I'm surprised, you know, if, if I were any kind of sci-fi guy or whatever, I would put that, that, that track in a movie so fast, but, you know, I can't, you know, most of those people in Hollywood that make those decisions, they're all under complete, and I will, and now I will say it, you know, angelic, demonic, you know, fallen angel, you know, demonic control. They're, you know, because they don't let you play with the toys and play with the, with the other children unless you, you know, are one of them. And the only way you could become one of them is if they make you into one of them, which means they put you to sleep, who you are, and they make you believe this is a real life you're having. So then they program you to go run after the rabbit. And the rabbit goes around and around, right? So you run around and around. And that's like 99% of the people out there are running after the rabbit. You know that, right? They're not even conscious. We're having a big awakening. No, we're not. Business is good. We're not, I watch the te television. None of those people are awake. You know, any channel you want, they're all asleep. I see people acting out in the movies, the director, the writer, all the actors, the crew, they're all asleep. So why wouldn't everyone be unless you had experience like this or something that would open your eyes? Most people just like, you know, yeah, that's all nice, but I got to make a living. They're unconscious. Well, I knew there was a reason why that was all shown to me. Because I guess I had always been somebody, especially back then I was young, you know. And I, I was really intense. But the more I tried to explain to people what I was uncovering and discovering, the more they tuned me out the more it fell on deaf ears. I couldn't get anyone to listen to me about the soul scalping machine on the moon until one day, or maybe a few years later, John Lear said it. John Lear said it. I haven't heard his specifics on that. You know, I just read what, you know, kind of what he said. It's a little different, you know. I mean, um, you know, I incorporate the tunnel of light because that's what I saw. I saw the tunnel of light like everyone sees. 
and the people and all the, you know, memories coming to life of people you lost and whatever. And you get to go be with them. And it's all waves of love. You've experienced nothing but intense love. You want to go into the light. And the grays are orchestrating it. And you wind up back here. Only with amnesia. Right? <laughs> that's, all, that's all part of it. I mean, that's, all, that's the experience I had. And, that's the, you know, the, and then there's this guy, Max Spire. And he seems to talk about anything and everything from kind of a new agey perspective. Um, so I discount a lot of what he says because it seems like doctrine, you know, a lot of it's doctrine. But in terms of the structure of his story about the moon and the, the device there that controls the souls, uh, it's dead on, you know. So you, did he get that from John Lear and copy? I, he could have. I have. I don't care whether he has credibility or not. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of people who debunked him and, you know, he's a controversial figure. You know, did he just want to be famous? You know, I, I don't know. I have no, um, I don't need him to be right or wrong. The fact is he's, this is what he's going at. And a lot of people are interested in what he has to say. So, you know, um, the, it, the fact that he said this, he says he's been there and he's experienced it. Well, I, I'm the only one I know who's actually experienced it and and lived to tell about it so that he says he's he's died and gone through that thing a few times uh eventually that that experience led me to or just prior to that i had come here to what a place in new mexico called the light institute it was all about the light the whole new age light run by the who they call the white witch of galisteo chris griscom and she used to be a, kind of a famous figure. She started a school called the Nizoni School of Consciousness for children, and all into the you know the the the, the you know the, the children of light, the new children, you know the indigo children, all that. It was all about that. It was all surrounding all that. Her main clients were German. They would come here from Germany, and they would go through. I went through a whole treatment there. I went through the whole thing of past life regression and then they you give different colors to these things that you come up in your memories and you sit in, in a you know you're naked under a sh under a, a blanket in a room and i told the guy it was a guy you know, so it's kind of weird he seemed gay to me too so there i was you know and i'm just you know wondering where this is going but he sits behind you you know and he you know tries to get you to go on this journey through your your various lives and you know it's kind of I, you know, they, they all have a problem when I get to the point of, um, I remember being invisible, not having a body. And I was just, but I was still, I was perfect <clears throat> because that's not something humans can relate to. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> then I said, you know, I keep seeing this mountain and, uh, I, I was dr drawn to it and I drove there. And I kept driving to this this mesa, and I and I don't I don't understand it, and that's how I found you guys. I, you know, I need healing. I, I know I do. I mean, I'm messed up. I'm really messed up. I just want my life. You know, I want to be able to live. You know, so I was very disturbed. That's why I went there. And then the 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 white witch, Chris Griscom, who I should have known. I had read her book, and 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 she had a book out, and she talked about defeating a witch in Mexico, a Santeria witch. And, you know, the Santeria witches are very powerful. They're especially multi-generational. I had one on me, like the last, probably still on me, you know, cursing me on a daily basis. And uh, very powerful. <clears throat> they ruin, can ruin your life. They definitely shape your life. And uh, so she went up against this major bruja in some Mexican village. And she says she, she was victorious because in witchcraft, everything is about who wins and who loses, right? It's a zero-sum game. So if you go up against, if you're a witch going up against another witch, there will be a victor and there will be a loser. This is one thing that people have to understand. If you've seen enough of the Hobbit movies, you understand that, right? <laughs> there's a winner and there's a loser. And she claims to have won. So why didn't I just put two and two together then and say, oh, she must be a witch. I didn't even think about witch. I didn't even know they existed. I, 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 I was so amnesiaed out. You have no idea. So I didn't put that together that she's a witch. And she always dresses in white. She has white blonde hair and looks like she's coming from Atlantis. Okay. 
intense blue eyes, kind of pretty back then in the late eighties. And then I had these experiences later, but I, I talked to her and I told her what I thought she was. She was leading a meditation in some courtyard. And I told her, I thought she was doing something for world peace. And I think it had to do with the Iraq war or something. And I told her what she was doing, sending these figure eights of light through the air. I told her that. And then she started attacking me and criticizing me and, you know, laughing at me for living in Los Angeles. And, you know, she was very mean. And I was very, you know, nice. I wanted to, I went through her program. I was going through her program. Obviously, I wanted to have good regard for the head of it. But I I was unfairly and out of the blue attacked. Well, now I understand why. Because I am now what I was then, what I was when I was born, what I have always been. But they attack you, blindside you without telling you why. They didn't tell me why. I was obviously a prodigal son. I had no business being there at the Light Institute. It's funny. I've seen her now as an old lady walking around. You know, she'll, she'll, we used to live in a place. Oh, I hate this thing. It's, I have to keep touching the, leaning over to touch the pad because it goes to the screensaver. I know you can tell it not to. I understand. So, and then I've seen her, uh, and, and she's still dressed in white white cotton garments and she said that the reason that she moved to Galisteo oh oh I didn't finish my story I'm sorry a little bit scattered so I'm there I say this mountain made me drive here I drove here and I drove here and I told you it was nonlinear so I drove here and I drove here and I drove here I kept I drove one time in the snow right to that mountain in the snow it's snowing and I'm standing there screaming at it and I'm crying and screaming I don't know why I'm going there I'm having the most bizarre experience with this Mesa. And, you know, so I'm in the session with this guy. Let's call him John. And he's, you know, and I kept, and I, so I was telling him while I was in this kind of trance state about this. And he goes, you mean the wave? And he blasts open the doors of this old territorial, you know, ter- territorial type architecture place we're in. He blasts open the doors and light comes streaming in. He goes, you mean that? You mean that? And out there was a, the perfect view of this mesa called Cerro Pallone, the wave. It looks like a wave breaking, right? And I said, I'd gone out there and I found petroglyphs. I said, yes, that's it. It's like no matter where I move, no matter where I go, right out my window is that. And then that I know is a portal to outer space or something, to another dimension, to something. And uh, then he described how the head of the Light Institute, Chris Griscom, uh, moved there and put these windows in her ceiling so she could keep communicating with the UFOs that fly into that wave and they disappear. And sometimes there's even jets from Kirtland, she said, or she wrote in a book, Kirtland Air Force Base, that scramble to chase them, but then when they go through the ground, they go right into the ground and gone, right into the side of the mountain. And then not far from there is Sandia, where I knew somebody that uh, is working on high-tech laser weapons for the military, uh, classified stuff. Yes, I don't know how I know. It's, all I know is it's laser. I don't know. Hey, hey, NSA, that's all I know. Okay, I don't know anything else about it, just that that's what he was working on. He told me that much. It's not my fault. (laughs) Except that these things make nuclear weapons look like a joke. (laughs) So you've probably never seen one. You know, they could, they, what they're working on now is they're, they're working on trying to use them without getting detected that they have it right. The classic ray gun, if you will, you know, the ray gun from the fifties, that's coming. That's like the next thing, right? Shooting people with rays rather than bullets. Uh, but anyway, it does, you know, so, so Sandia is there, Kirtland Air Force Base, um, the, the Sandia Mountain, I guess, if you were to go from the Cerro Pallone, there's also a movie ranch there called the Cook Ranch, which is where they have filmed, uh, uh, you know, tons and tons of movies on that, that ranch, including, I think, you know, things like Cowboys and Aliens and, you know, they, 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 they film around here. We live on a movie ranch. They film here. 
twenty four seven. They film here all year long. There is nothing but this is Hollywood. <laughs> it's unfortunate because I don't like it. I moved here to get away from all that, but then I wound up right in the middle of it again because now the production's way up. They get a thirty percent write off if they make a movie here. So, you know, you can always detect the Hollywood people when they're in town. <laughs> you know, even the crew is arrogant, right? They're, they're like, the nose is in the air, you know. You can't touch this type of thing. It's it's disgusting. It's why I left L.A., you know. I, I don't need to see that here. I like real people, right? So anyway, um, so yeah, I said to the guy, I said, yeah, that's it. What What is that? I said, I've gone up there. I've seen these petroglyphs. He goes, yeah, there's petroglyphs of flying saucers. There's petroglyphs of them, of star people, you know, people from another dimension, you know, and all that, that they're painting on those petroglyphs. Since that time, they, they roped it off with barbed wire so you can put warning signs there that if you have to go over a fence, right, to get up onto this razorback kind of ridge thing, that's not exactly, it overlooks that mesa, right? But then there's petroglyphs there. And uh, so they all told me to go look at those and I went and I saw them. And I had the uh, deep experience looking into the valley. There's like the wave on one side, there's that. And then there's an Indian Kiva, a r- place of ritual, way at the end of that wave thing. And then there's the Cook Movie Ranch. As I'm looking, I could see the interaction between the Anasazi who made those petroglyphs and, um, and, the, and the aliens, if you will. Like maybe they took them somewhere. They just, like the Maya and like many other civilizations, they just disappeared but we even find pottery shards even here where I live here, you know, occasionally that. And I found a huge Anasazi uh, spate, you know, a thing that you work in the garden to break the earth up like a little shovel type thing in the form of a big arrowhead. And it looked like it was made yesterday. It was buried, you know, but when it rains, it uncovers things like that. And there was this new age priest who was visiting me. I know. It's like the same vibe, the same energy as that whole experience I had. And here he is visiting here because he wants to get me. You know, he wants me to join him somehow. He wants to, you know, initiate me, indoctrinate me. So he's coming as a, like, you know, uh, just to, because he says we're friends and, and we know the same guy in L.A. And, you know, so he's visiting here. So I gave it to him and the Indians went nuts. I mean, you know, they, they live in another dimension. You know, there's like the ones that are dead and passed on. They're not. They're, they're right here. Many of them. And they attacked him. I knew this would happen because I saw in the spirit. And I go into the spirit a lot and I don't tell you. You know what I mean? But maybe I should. So in the spirit I saw they were just like he had this van he and his wife were traveling in. And he was heading back to Canada and, you know, they were, they were attacking him. I mean, attacking and arrows through the thing and just, just attack, attack, attack. I mean, he was getting, he was like, I didn't know if he'd make it home. And then he said he had these terrible experiences, you know, on the way back. I mean, absolutely awful. And he thought I was doing it, but I was, I was just visioning it. I wasn't doing anything. I was watching it because he was so, remember that guy? Yeah. And, uh. And he was so adamant about, you know, they, they defiled my, my tabernacle of Yahweh. I made a little 12 foot by 12 foot. I don't know how high it is. Little area for prayer. Okay. That you would call it the tabernacle of Yahweh. It's really just a kind of a hakal, you know, that you could find a little shade for your horses or whatever, but it has a, uh, a brick on sand floor and some rocks around and you enter in and there's a couple of chairs there. Very uncomfortable though. I mean, it's, easier to sit on the ledge there and just you have a view of the best view in the whole property remember they they called that uh, guy and they said i was your handler yeah they called they called a guy and and but i mean he was like going back to 1991 he was like you know about the moon and then he was talking about the sylphs right and at one point i actually you know kind of saw that when these things would show up these kind of clouds would show up the chemtrails would be gone so I, I don't know what to say about it, but he was telling me that the sylphs were lovely creatures. They're conscious beings and the earth is a conscious being and everything is a conscious being. So he's like that. And then he goes up to my tabernacle of Yah, right? For the Lord. That's the first thing I did because he kind of gave us this property. He settled us here. We'd never been settled. We've been gypsies pretty much, Trish and I. And um, he went up there and worshiped the sun. I can't believe it. He said he had to see the sunrise. So he went up there with his wife and started worshiping the sun. 
And I had to, you know, really repent. I, I don't know. I, he found me. I didn't want him to come here. But we did his laundry for him. You know, they were on the road sleeping in the van, and that had to be uncomfortable. You know, I'm in a small RV, and I know even that, I feel like I need more room. You know what I mean? Eventually, it gets on your nerves. So, uh, but, but he was in this van, you know, and, and like I said, he was attacked, and he mentioned that he was terribly attacked. Okay, Dashishi. Here. He mentioned he was terribly attacked, and, but he took that thing with him. And I said, look, the reason you're being attacked is because you took that shovel, that, 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 that you know, that uh, triangular um, tool of the Anasazi that somehow was preserved perfectly for all this time. And what you're supposed to do with those things to avoid being cursed, to have, not have the Indian curse on you, right, is you take it to the elders. There, there's places, there's ways of... Of the, you know, you're supposed to keep it here or even just even better, just walk away, put it under very reverently, put it under some, because if you mess with stuff here, I'm telling you, God help you. Okay. God help you. These beings are real. They punched me. They've done all kinds of things. I, I was in this other dimension, you know, talking to all the people at the site of a massacre where they're all killed and they curse the ground. They're there to curse people trying to move into this house. I tried to explain that to people. They, when I was early Zeph report, they just ran me through the coals like how blasphemous that was. I'm saying, but it's, it really happened. And no one believed me. I mean, there are other worlds there. And those people were stuck there. And I told, what I did is I, I, I told them about the gospel is what I did. Funny, we were living on the, the, the hill of the, where the Cross of the Martyrs is in Santa Fe. It's a big landmark in Santa Fe, New Mexico. We were renting a condo there. The Cross of the Martyrs is the scene of an Indian massacre. The Cross of the Martyrs is to commemorate 22 Catholic priests who were slain by the Indians in retaliation. The town went back and forth between the Indians and the cavalry and the Spaniards and, the, you know, it was fought over quite heavily back in the 13 and 1400s. But anyway, um, you know, the, the Cross of the Martyrs is to commemorate 22. Well, when the Spaniards came back in for retaliation, they slaughtered women and children on the hill of the Cross of the Martyrs. And when the, the, the person who, who, who built this, it's their like townhouse condos thing, and who built it, you know, the wife of this guy who, by the, who tried to murder me when I was 18. Now, how do you run into a guy like that how many years later? I mean, I can't even put it. It's so wild, my story, that I have held it all back because it's just not believable. Except I know you believe me. You know I'm not. You've, you know you've heard bits and pieces of this before if you've been around. You know it's never changed, right? And that's the sign of a real story, of a real thing. You know, I know you think you went through something, Z, but... No, I went through something and it's been very consistent in my testimony and it has never changed. It's just the way it is. I don't seek experiences like that, but those beings that there were beings there in another dimension and they were plaguing the place and the woman, his wife that built it, she was mysteriously killed out of another place of, of uh, Indian curses called Tasuki. And uh, she was killed on the road and he never got over it. Her footsteps keep keep walking across the, the, the ceiling. And when, you know, two doors down was this guy who built them. And uh, he was a teacher at a college in Colorado. And, uh, but he had been, had ties to Hollywood as a composer. He was a, a made man in, in, I guess, in the Italian mafia. He's Italian. And uh, anyway, he never got over his wife being killed like that. But she was killed because... She took the bones and threw them out, and she built a pool there. There was a pool at this townhouse. They don't all have pools. This one had an infinity pool and a swim against thing in it and a hot tub. It was all very made of rocks. It was all very nice. I did some baptizing in there, too. But anyway, I preached the gospel for three days to the Indians who were dead, and then they, talk, uh, uh, then they accused me of necromancy and you know, contacting the dead and all that. And I didn't, they contacted me. You know, I didn't contact them, they contacted me. I would probably be very good at doing exorcisms because, you know, they, they're not shy around me. You know, these are not demons. 
And what they what happened is the guys that worked on the pool there, they, they used to bring tobacco ties because sometimes they, you know, they get punched by the, there's, there were some scout Indians there. There was definitely um, the women and children and all that. And then, then I, then what happened after I ministered to them and it, it, it cleared the whole place and the pool cleared it, the pool would turn red, blue, green on its own for no reason, you know, turn different colors. Um, they, they, they would, they would, you know, there would be these hammers that would, you know, put dents in your car and your fender that did on my motorcycle that, that I didn't do it. You know what I mean? They did it. And, uh, like they punched the, the pool guys. He said, look, we're scared to work on this thing. Every time we come here, they do something to us. You know what I mean? So we bring tobacco ties to try to appease them. I said, well, there's no appeasing them. They were massacred here and they're commemorating the, the Catholic priest, but all the, the women and children, the Catholic church slaughtered in retaliation that goes unmentioned and uncelebrated in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I guess to the victor goes the history. So there's an unfair thing, right? And yours truly was right in the middle of it. And another unfair thing was my own untimely death when I was put into a coma by this guy and his cohorts. And I don't know whether he even, because I never told him that, that the story, but I think he figured it out. And then what did he do? He put all his properties up for sale, went running back to Colorado, his home. <laughs> he hightailed it out of there is what he did. Trish actually, you know, we were kind of having a few drinks or whatever, and, you know, Trish wanted to give him a Zephyrport t-shirt, not knowing, of course, at that time, I hadn't put it all together yet. So she walked on the roof over there, and they were having a barbecue with the, with the kids out in the backyard, right? So she came, got over there. She walked right across the roof. He had been inside. He comes out, and he goes, I thought you were my wife, right? When he heard the footsteps, it's like, okay, so you know you have footsteps every night on the roof like we do. In other words, she walks from there all the way over down to his place, and she's a, a ghost, okay? But she's, that roof, that roof walking never stopped. The, the poltergeist activity did stop where the things would fly off the bookshelves and things like that. It was like poltergeist, a poltergeist movie. It was like a poltergeist experience. But the footsteps never stopped, even after that. The Indians moved on from haunting the place. They moved on. To, I said, you got to move on to eternity with the Lord, you know. We're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God as I explain this to them. Eye for an eye, right? Just, and that just kept them stuck. They needed vengeance. They wanted justice. So they were stuck. They couldn't move on. What's that have to do with the soul scalping machine? I don't know. I can't. I can't. I don't. I don't. Does every soul go there? I, you know, that's a good question. Did they refuse to go there? Did they die and then stay there where they were? Or is that acceptable to become a ghost or, you know, what the story is? There's no linear system that can explain all the things I'm talking about. You know, I mean, there's no linear system that can connect the Indian massacre exactly with the moon. The pool pool would turn colors. Trish is reminding me. Anyway, here's what happened with the pool guy. Pool guy uh, was like a, a Hispanic Indian, and I don't know what tribe, but he was like, for, you know, you know, they bring tobacco tie. So basically after that, I, I was telling him the, what I was doing. You know, they were pulling me into the spirit. I thought they were going to pull me into death or drown me, you know. But it, they wanted to be ministered to, so I did. And then um, I ministered to the dead. I really did. I, I didn't know all the rules and all the Lisa Rubies would be out there waiting to, to you know, they, they're, they're all like surfacy, you know, vapid, uh, legalistic idiots. You know what I'm saying? They would know the spirit if it bit them on the ass. All they know is just textual knowledge. They don't know any, anything about the spiritual realm, anything about the multidimensionality, anything about the, the moon and the cosmos. They don't know any. They're actually totally ignorant these people. So I don't care what they say about me. Now I don't care. I did then uh, because I was surprised. I was just saying, hey, I was really earnestly relating this. Well, anyway, what happened with the pool guy is he brought his kids. He brought his kids for me to baptize in the pool that was now clean because he couldn't believe the miracle he had seen. So I baptized them. How do you like that? Pretty lousy story, huh? I'm so blasphemous. He wouldn't have been there unless the pool cleared up. It stopped turning colors. 
They were no longer hit. Their car, their fl- flat tires, all the stuff that would happen stopped. All that supernatural stuff stopped. All the getting punched, punched in the gut, punched in the head, punched in the arm, it all stopped. The need for tobacco ties stopped. The fear of working on the pool stopped. He was so blown away at the power of God to clear that situation up because it was all in Jesus' name that he brought his kids to be baptized. At the same time, I'm running into my assassin two doors down that built the damn place we're renting. You can't make this up. You can't. You, you couldn't. I, I've been a fiction writer. You know what I mean? I know how to spin a tale, how to make stuff up. You, no fiction writer in the world could make, you just can't make, make up, especially when it's, again, linear in the spirit, but nonlinear at using our language. But I'm painting such pictures as you can put it all together, right? And it should give you hope that, number one, you d- greetings in the name of the Most High. I don't think I greeted you properly. Greetings in the name of the Most High. The Most High is my friend. The Lord Jesus is the Most High. He is my friend. I have all kinds of problems in the flesh, all kinds of limitations, all kinds of sin, all kinds of where I fall short and all that, just like you, just like anyone else. But I have these uncanny abilities to, I think why I was so good at fiction and poetry and things. And of course that putting together the, you know, we're putting together a whole thing about the ocean and being underwater. You know, I, I can't seem to get it, but it's going to be done movie style because a lot of people like it when I, no, I mean, I can mix movies. You know, I've, I definitely have shown you that. I've done it before. You know what I mean? So I've, I, you know, I have that in my skill set. I got that in my wheelhouse, as they say. I love doing that mix of sound effects, music, dialogue. And I like doing a kind of a theater of the mind thing, you know, which I did with Kelly on that uh, simulacra, which, She really brought her game on that one. She did that perfect. That was exactly what I was looking for as a producer, just exactly that thing. And when you hear it today, it sounds perfect, isn't it? Like it just was, it's like that song was just done yesterday. It makes more sense today than it did a year and a half ago or whenever it came out. And it it ties all this together, what we're talking about. And it even ties into the Mandela effect, which is nothing more or less then, you know, the bleed through of dimensions, the bleed through of different things, the shifting of things, the, the, the memory is also a dimension. Thoughts are a dimension. Um, you know, when you're taken somewhere uh, out of body, let's say, or, you know, you think you're going in your spirit or you know, something of you is going there to the moon. I do believe I went there. So it must have been an out of body experience. Um, but again, none of this stuff is, you know, when we start tying it down to human logic, that's where we blow the story. That's where we become liars. And I'm, so I'm not going to do that with you. Uh, you know, if I said that the souls are recycled there, I say, yeah. And then I guess it doesn't include people that are stuck or this whole thing I found in the pool. I don't know. You know, that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that contradiction alone. I don't have to answer that. There's many things that are contradictory here and not contradictory there. Suffice to say, the beings here on earth are here to either A, choose God, or B, choose death. It, no, you don't, nobody chooses Satan. You choose death. When you pass through to the other side, break on through to the other side, yeah. When you break on through to the other side, you become what? A dead man. Hello, dead man. Oh, hello, dead man. Yes, dead man. Are you awake? Wakey, wakey, dead man. So that's the realm of the dead. And that is another dimension. It looks just like this one, but I assure you, these people and me, I and them are not on the same page. We are not in the same dimension. We may have to cooperate and and use each other from time to time and try to be civil and all that. And we do, but we are not from the same place. Where you come from? Well, I don't come from where you come from, but you know, I guess that's what we got to deal with. Hey, we're at war, baby. That's right. Humans are not here for their own pleasure. Humans are here. And they're here to be harvested as food. And that's the only purpose they really have. And that's why they're recycled. What's harvested is consciousness. The human consciousness 
in the image likeness of God, so a, a piece of God, if you will, can then be used to create whatever they want to create. It's a way of usurping God's power through the human so they can do their own thing. <laughs> yeah, so that's where all the UFOs and the, the machine on the moon and the crystal cities and the Nazis, you know, both here and on Mars and the moon and wherever else they are, all this stuff ties together into one whole gestalt of existence, existence. Resistance. A piece de resistance. Yeah. So it all ties together, you know, in a nonlinear way. The human needs to understand that they want that from you for a reason. A raison d'etre. The reason that you live is the reason you go through the tunnel of light. I guess not everyone has that experience. I mean, you know, with me, I uh, don't anticipate any tunnel of light because I go with my Lord. The same with you, I think. You know what I mean? I don't want to go there. I've already seen through it. I'm warning other people like I did uh, on, uh, uh, I was with Art Bell on the Art Bell show that one time and I did talk about this. And he said, oh no, you've disturbed me about the tunnel of light business. I said, well, that's, that's, what, I, that's what happened to me. I, I experienced it. I saw it. And I saw the result of it. You wind up right back here. And I used to say this, but around the Christians, I started pulling my my punches. So I didn't, you know, say reincarnation, but it is a recycling. I did say that back then. And, I, you know, I got in trouble for it. And uh, But, hey, the truth is the truth. So I'm saying it now. You drive it yourself with the scriptures. If you... if. You, you're one of these guys that has to have everything line up with scripture. There's a lot of stuff that happens that no one ever wrote about, <laughs> you know, ever in any book, that in any library, anywhere. And so you just have to figure out, you know, whether you're going to be mind control or whether, you know, whether the word is written on your heart or whether it's going to be a textual external thing that you do. You know what I mean? It's, it's up to you. That's your choice. I don't, I'm not going to preach at you because it's everyone's on their own level, you know. I trust that you're doing diligent work. I trust that you're not, you know, lazily minded. I trust that you're going to, you know, your mileage varies, of course, from mine. But, you know, the thing is, we're all on a different level heading toward, I would say, the light, the true light, the light that the, the war is all about. The whole world is at war 24-7, 365 against God. The whole world. And practically everyone and everything in the world. And on top of it, the most bizarre thing is the world isn't even real. You know, there is no reality here. It's more akin to a dream state that, that, that m mimics what we might call reality, that we kind of collectively agree on. But the real reality is what's hidden, what we don't see. The fake reality is what we do see. It's like we're turned inside out and backwards, right? So we can't see the truth. It's called the curse of humanity, or if you like, the fall of human. To be at the behest. And then, you know, when they show up in their ships and their, the stuff I've seen that they have, oh God, you'll have, you know, billions of people worshiping these things, worshiping the tunnel of light, worshiping the crystal city, worshiping their their what they'll think are their progenitors, their progenitors, if you will. Uh, they will be worshiping and worshiping to no end. So many billions of people. And so the veil stays shut. Eh, thank you. So that they can't just come in here and do that. And who, who keeps the veil shut? The almighty God. And that is exactly why I go with God, because he trumps them. He's the real power, not witchcraft, not UFOs, not high technology, which is a joke. Half this stuff around here doesn't even work. Not um, cloning, not eternal life in man's terms, stuck in a 3D hellish uh, hell. I'm sorry, we're in hell. This is hell. 
you know, the idea of being endlessly recycled in this thing is complete hell. That does jibe too with Eastern cosmogony and cosmology. The idea that man is stuck in the wheel, the current, the Dharma wheel. Birth, 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 over and over and over, and, over, and they got to get off the wheel. So the Buddha seeks to meditate until it extinguishes all desire, you know, just extinguishes all of it until there's no pull left in going into death so that the Buddhist can die without desire so he will not be reincarnated into the world because the world is suffering. What's the, what's the first tenet of Buddhism, folks? What's the first tenet of Buddhism? All life is suffering. What does the Bible say about suffering? To be a, a conscious being alive on earth, what did Jesus do? He suffered. What do the people of Christ do? We suffer, right? Because the doors are slammed in your face. You don't, are not given the same opportunity. You're not treated the same. This is the age of Christian persecution. You might have noticed. It's finally come to America. What do you know? At long last. Um, but um, this is nothing new, of course. Persecution of various people. Um, right now we have white males are being persecuted. The white male is being persecuted for all, causing all the damage in all the world. Seriously, this is the stupidest place I've ever been. And these are the stupidest people I've ever seen. And I'd actually rather just play among the stars and hang out with these so-called advanced beings, but they, they're kind of, you know, puppets too. You know, they wind up singing the praises of the, uh, the, the, of the, of the fallen one. So it's like, ah, I can't do that because I got you beat there, buddy, you know? So there really isn't, you know, there really isn't some special Disneyland escape for me. I mean, I, 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 you know, I have this knowledge. I have had these experiences. And, um, but because I know the truth and, uh, you know, like that one guy you're hearing, that Max Spire guy, he's totally indoctrinated to the new age. I mean, everything he says, it's all about higher self. <laughs> Who wrote about higher self, but Chris Griscom here in New Mexico, the, the, the white witch of Galisteo. And um, and the, her whole book was about the higher self, the higher self, the the higher self is what was contacted through this my facilitator, in these past life regression to give colors to the traumas, and I did have quite a colorful you know bunch of stuff that came up and and I was glowing after the experience and, and akin to when I like when people do satanic rituals they glow have you noticed. The glow doesn't refract off anything. You can see the glow around them. Like, you know, it's like they have to keep doing that ritual to keep glowing or they fade out. So that they're like, I'm, I'm a light bulb that's on. I'm always on. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm a bright light. I'm always on. They have to keep working at it, but their light's different from mine. My light is a light that I can't, that doesn't give me any visceral help. I have it. People tell me I have it, but I, it's not like I can access it when I'm bummed out and go, come on, I find the light here. That, give me something. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> that light ain't going to feed me right now like them. But when they do it, so they get this, it's a different kind of light. It's more of a fuzzy glow. It's almost like a light diffuser. Remember in old photography where you'd put a thing in front of the lens that would diffuse the candles and everything would be kind of diffused, that kind of light. It's a, more of a glow than a light. Okay, they have a glow, I have a light. In other words, I'm an energy source. Hello? I'm an energy source. If you're a lamb out there, you're an energy source. Be careful that they don't use you for that purpose. I got to give everything to the Almighty God. And at the same time, you know, I can't find answers. What the hell was that? There was an. Did you hear that?
journey exactly you're on a journey you're not at the same place day to day you're on a journey we're on a journey together you know and um that's called up through the sky and in other words it's a song about look you know we have to get out of here i'm here to make remind you that when you came here you know you've got to get out of here and that, you know, you're done with this. You want to wake up, but you want to go home. You don't want to go back in the spin-dry cycle of the washing machine controlled by other people for the purpose of, of, of just parasitically living off you. You want to go to where you're free. You want to be alive and free. God gives us one way out. I know. I know that's inconvenient. That's an inconvenient truth because I know that people really don't want to acknowledge that. They go, well, I'm a Buddhist. Well, I'm a Buddhist too. Doesn't conflict with my belief in Jesus. Or or if you like, in God. It doesn't conflict with this idea that I have. I mean, I'm a Buddhist in, you know, in philosophic terms. I'm not really a Buddhist because I don't believe in a works-based salvation Right? I don't believe I can meditate on my own, extinguish desire, and get the heck out of here. Besides, that's contradictory. That's not compassion. What, what, no, one is, no one is really in Buddhist philosophy unless all people are enlightened and relieved of this Dharma wheel. No one is. 
So they couldn't, you know, and they keep, you know, they keep coming back into that contradiction. And of course, that, you know, how they, but like I sympathize with Buddhists and Hindus and, you know, and various people, you know, I'm not really much of a monotheist. My background is more Eastern, not Western, you know, in terms of what I like. I like Eastern music too. I haven't played it lately. I also like Middle Eastern music, and that comes more like the Allah, you know, all that, uh, Islam. Or just music of the Middle East, you know. And I like all kinds of music. I like it, you know, all, all kinds of... When I say that, I mean, I'm thinking the musicians are peaceful in, in the Middle East. Hopefully, they don't want to behead anybody. But but you never know. You know, give them a chance. Uh, I mean, so, we're here. We know we need to find the way out. That's instinct in our DNA. We know we must find the way out. And this is what I know about Yeshua. But I want to look to me it, again. Like I differ with the uh, bros out there, sis- sisters out there, that think you need to say the name a certain way. All the Yeshua names are false. Okay, Jesus is false. Yeshua is false. They're all false. Everything we say is false in that regard. If you think that's the name of God. So do the best you can with your transliteration. Uh, We can't even pronounce Yahweh, right? Because it's Y-H-W-H. There's no vowels in it. So just just relax. It's not about, you know, the terrestrial life on earth. It's not about the earth being restored. It's we have to get out of here, whatever this is. Okay, we don't know what it is, as the song says. We don't know what it is. We, We all speculate that we think we know. Some people say, well, the earth is round, the earth is flat. Or, you know, I'm, I'm like, who told you there's an earth? How do you know there's an earth? You know what I mean? I mean, we can just go there. So then, you know, <laughs> pox on all houses, right? We can just go there, okay? There is no earth. There's this, whatever this is. And we must get out of here, out of this, to live. I said to live. Otherwise, we're in a death. We're in a, we're in a slave uh, recycling job, hijacking of human consciousness for the production of caca. For the production of pure, you know what, excrement. Because that's about all these people have ever figured out how to do. To use the human being in no way that the human being was intended to be used. And to have some artificial thing at death to, to circumvent the, the um, you know, to, to somehow the goal is the same, whether it's the soul scalping thing, whether it's people having so much desire, they, they die, but they don't leave. You know what I mean? Like Gettysburg and people report, you know, ghosts there. Yeah, those spirits haven't left. They, they're there. So they have no need to, to recycle them. They're, they're nice and, you know, available right there. They're dude. I guess anything to do, we'd have to stipulate that spirits that remain here locked into something are doing the bidding of these people, whoever they are, that are creating this world and this mess. Now, we say God's in control, but in this game, the rules are these. You know, God, it's, it's a free will choice. You know, um, and it's odd that in the end, of course, it's not about choice it's more about consent because we don't choose god god chooses us uh we're not you know we either belong to god or we don't if we belong to god and we're in rebellion then of course that that then leads into constant eternal slavery and uh the the people on the other side of this wall this dimension are all too happy to have the human offer themselves up as slaves and, you know, that's why I don't mind if they suppress me on YouTube or whatever. You know, I know people from time to time write me and they show me the stats. And I say, look, there's nothing I can do about it, okay? If anything goes good there, they'll remove it. That's just the way it is. And good is relative. What's good? Good is this podcast gets to everyone who needs it. There's YouTube. There's other blog. Other people blog and, and they get huge numbers there's podbean which has huge numbers there's all these different platforms there's soundcloud there's this there's that there's a million ways you google it it's all over the place uh so some people google it L- like you know when lisa ruby has uh, accused me of stuff her, her negative stuff on me is still there but i don't care 
because I agree with what she said. I just don't put it in a negative light. Like Zeph Daniel and, and she, she goes, Zeph Daniel and what's her name? Oh, who was the new age actress? Shirley MacLaine ag- agree. There is no absolute reality. Well, that's correct. Es correcto. See. Si. Come on, man. I mean, you want to call Disneyland real. That's your problem. You know, those of us who have seen through it understand better. We, this, this place, it's here. Yes. God is having us go through it because here we have a chance to get back home. But it's a very narrow path called Jesus, the true light. That's why it's called salvation. That's why the work at the cross and the shed blood of Christ is so important because we are on a journey, right? Even if you're here to give up the ghost to Satan, even that's a journey. You might be on a, you might have to be recycled a million times. I don't know. Even the recycling thing is still also an illusion in a sense. You know what I mean? It's still part of a dream, right? Even that has no real relevance other than it's an interesting story about how they develop technology to trap souls, to keep souls here. But they also, you know, there's reports about people being put in souls in boxes and carrying them around and trading them like trading cards, right? We're aware of all that. The Bible talks about trading the souls of men in the book of Revelation, and so we're very, very keen on this, this idea that the soul is a commodity that is worth a lot to them. It's everything to them. The humans, they wouldn't, you know what? They wouldn't even exist without the human soul at this point. In the end, everything is reconciled to the father anyway. The only thing that has life are the children of the almighty Yah. Other than that, you know, but you say, well, all these systems on the earth and nature and all that. Yes, don't just enjoy nature, but let's not worship it, shall we? I mean, don't go up to my tabernacle and start worshiping the sun. That's a t- total insult to me. Worship the sun, S-O-N, not the sun, S-U-N. And by all means, you know, and by all measures and by all of your ability, please do not make Saturn into, I, I cut the guy off when we started talking about Saturn. I'm, I'm sick of Saturn. Don't make that into a god, please. And you know, they did in, in, you know, what Greek mythology, they called Saturn Kronos and stuff like that. Don't do that. Time is an illusion. Forget time. Don't do those things. Put the focus on the Lord. And look, here's what the Lord has us doing. Simple things, you know. Now, had I not ministered, and that really was in a ministerial capacity, to the all those beings at the at the site of the Indian massacre, a site that was um, desecrated by this woman who then paid with her life, and the assassin, her husband. You can't make this up. The result is clear. They went with the Lord Jesus Christ. He was there to take them, and they went with him. The pool changed. The pool men were, hard, were, were almost traumatized by it. One of them brought the kids to be baptized because he saw what happened. Are you going to tell me that that experience is phony? Because, <laughs> no, no, you'd be in good stead. That's what the church did. That's what Lisa Ruby did. Who represents, you know, the complete vapid Christian, right? The completely mind-controlled MK Ultra Christian. You know, they believe in what they can see and hear and touch and what the pastor says. They don't have anything beyond that. That's it. That's the, that's the extent of their spirituality. That is sad, but again, that is, they've chosen that. They've chosen to be satanic Christians. Satan is a meaning materialistic. When you're materialistic, you are satanic. Right? If you care, I, I mean, I like using material things. I, I have a, Synthesize. I'm going to take some video of that and share that with you. It's a, it's a module. It's modular. It's um, you know what I mean. It's just kind of a box, and you twist the knobs, and it's got a, such a nice sound. And and I did have a track now. It's out to uh, Micah, the guitar player. He's going to put some 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 uh, guitar with it. But uh, it's just all all that synth and and uh, 
it's nice to have a, a box that somebody labored over <laughs> the various sounds and and things, you know, as opposed to just having a VST, a plug-in or whatever. The plugins are very good. Serum and Omnisphere and stuff. Those are phenomenal, you know what I mean? But they still don't replace the analog synth, you know, the, the box. It's got wood trim on it. It's just, I like it. I like it like I like an old telephone, you know, an analog telephone. I like, you know, you, you have to dial it, you know. I like that. I Call me, you know, uh, see, ever since the CD came out, I feel I've been, you know, taking it up the you-know-what for, 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 you know, this is all the aliens, this stuff, all this digitizing everything, and quantum computing. And this all comes from, you know, the fallen angels, right? So I'm kind of tuning out an AI, yeah, AI. All of that, you know, that is about slavery and getting control of human con- Why do you think they're, they, they wanted billions of people for a while? Because they were linking all the people together in the hive as a quantum computer. Now they're able to do it artificially without the human. So now they're like, yeah, let's get rid of those evil human because God's awful. And yet, if it weren't for God, they wouldn't breathe another breath. God is what beats the heartbeats because of God. The blood flows through the veins and feeds the body because of God. The DNA is also sacred because it is of God. God sustains Everything in the world that's, that you see, the waterfall, the stream, the rain cycles, the people, the animals. God is, you know, behind it all. But man, of course, has free will. And, you know, the people that have the free will today have decided that uh, to destroy humanity and destroy the earth while they're on the board of the EPA how you get that double double thing going that's that's uh, that's that's purely genius that's pure genius double double is not something i can do i get duped by it quite constantly you know the very person that comes as the savior is killing you you know and uh so it i've kind of done with this you know and so we're going to have more talks about these dimensions because and i believe that um as long as i'm not so you know, as long as I'm a little bit sensitized, you know what I mean? And not just anesthetized. I can, you know, I have, God can show me many things. Unless I'm so concerned with the things of the world that I, my prayers are constantly worldly. And I'm aware out there, there are people out there that need help. There are people out there that need, you know, all kinds of things. And we pray for them and we're here to do what we can, but. You know, ultimately, the Lord wants hearts and minds. He wants us to 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 um, be good stewards and, and to be a, a force of good in the world. But he's also, at the same time, calling us to be sensitive to what this is all about. Which is not about, you know, this world necessarily. So I would hope that you would... Uh, Be aware that, you know, your life, my life, you know, the, the things and the circumstances of the people around you, nothing is by accident. Nothing is by happenstance. Everything is been planned. The people you run into, what you're going to say, what you don't say, everything. You're learning, right? You're learning to be a better person. You're learning. You're, you're coming out of ignorance. And hopefully learning by mistakes. You know, that's what we're here to do. Learn by mistakes. But all of this is a journey not to be just led into having amnesia and having another go around at this hellhole. You know, this is not the idea. Um, people say, well, the earth is just a real blessing and the beings here. And I said, no, it's not. As long as there is death in the world, there is no b real blessing. There is something we have to get beyond that. Because that is not my experience. That is not what my life is. To be, have cycles of life, death, pain, suffering, etc. is not on the menu for me. It's not good enough for me. If it's good enough for you, then by all means, you know, go with uh, the angel of light. Because you'll have a lot more of this. There's a lot more of this where that came from, if you know what I'm saying. A lot more.
okay? And uh, I feel like I've been there, done that. You know, I've, I've, I just feel like I need my father. I need him to, you know, take me home. I need him to come get me. <laughs> I've, I've, I wanted, I just, I, maybe I'm not good enough. You know, I've, I've, I have not tamed the flesh. And I'm sorry, but you know what? I don't ever want flesh again. You know what I'm saying? I don't want it again. Wouldn't you want to be just 25 years old one more time? Not really. Some people have that fantasy that things would be so good if they know what they know now and could go back to that age. I think I would be in sheer pain at my peers, wouldn't I? I would be a pariah. No one would listen to me. Everyone would mock me. They would laugh at me. How would it be any different than what I've already gone through? It'd be the same thing all over again, would it not? So I, I, I contend that, you know, God's genius in setting this thing up so that we pass through as if on a journey. And if you have made the decision for Christ, then you are on a journey home through the cross. The cross is very important. Now, when they... Have to, I want their life to be eternal and to be extended and all that. They literally drink blood of innocent ones, of children, and eat the flesh. Because you see, they, they just keep trying to use physical means to do spiritual things. And it, it's only a temporary whatever, but I mean, they're addicted to it. As, as you know, they're addicted to, you know, abducting children and doing, that's what 20 and 20 is about. <clears throat> they're not just used for sex. They're they're because children are pure. You know, they have children. They have breeders. They have all kinds of people that that produce beings to be sacrificed, to be you know drained of blood and eaten. And that's what Father Barrett in my you know 1991. I had no idea why there was a ritual in the basement. They were all the church, the hospital that Blake was in. Everything was dedicated, was run by this Joey Light guy, Lucifer. And uh, how would I end up writing about that after the experience on the moon? How would I end up writing that when I didn't know about such things in 1991? Well, how did that come to me? Wasn't that reminding me of, hey, you know, this is real. I mean, I was just kind of taking dictation, wasn't I? Trying to explain to myself what maybe I forgot through amnesia, that, hey, wake up. You know, you're writing the screenplay to wake yourself up. This is real. Everything in this thing is real. Uh, people think they can get away from the devil. And the answer is, no, you not so fast. Because intertwined with that is, you know, that's right. The satanic powers can be used for good or evil. It's just called power. So why does God allow that? I don't know. You ask him. I would be foolish to, 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 to say there's nothing like that going on. And most Christians should be prepared for battle on that front. And the book of Ephesians is very clear in chapter 6 that this whole thing is about, really the whole thing is, is just the sojourn is to God, unceasing prayer, uh, unwavering devotion, and, you know, to do your best here on earth to, to be, you know, to, to become the person of Christ if you can and to change your consciousness. But, you know, most of us are, are, are battling and slogging through this molasses of existence, this morass of, 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 of stopping and stifling and suppressing and holding back and unable to get in, in, in depression and bad feelings and suffering and hard to do anything when you're pinned down like that. And uh, it's just, ain't it a bitch, you know? It's just, it's just, you know, when you compare it to flying, when you compare it to unlimited creativity, when you compare it to, you know, what we had before we lost it or how we got here, 
whatever this is. I'd like to smash the whole thing, the moon, the earth, all of it. Just get rid of it all. There's nothing good. These, these beings, these bipeds, <laughs> have wrecked Mars, the moon, and the earth. Or if you like the Nazis, have wrecked it all. And they're still, you know, the, the Fourth Reich is alive and well. Yes, the final solution, no? Hillary Clinton. Uh, yes, yes. A reptile, if there ever was one. You elect her, and you're going to wish you were never born. And America might. Because America is a genius. I used to say that Dick Cheney was a genius just because my friend was saying that. And, you know, at one point I said that George Foreman was a genius because of the Foreman Grill. He invented the Foreman Grill, and it was really popular for a while. Dick Cheney, just because Dick Cheney is allowed to thrive, so he must be a genius. Right? <laughs> My humor, it's, I'm sorry. It's, it, if you have to explain, you know, why the joke is funny, it, it's just, it's a, it's a peculiar kind of humor that I have. And, um, you know, so I'm going to go now. I, uh, I want you to know that I, I hadn't really put all this together like I had today, not because I didn't want to, but just because I was sort of traumatized by the way that Christians treated me. And even though I'm, be you know, I'm stronger than that, uh, it, it must have been like it made some kind of impression on me. So that I would pull my punches a little bit, not not on not per on purpose. I just am realizing now, uh, and and really, I I you know we shouldn't. I'm not going to worry where the truth leads or what the truth. I just would rather say the truth than make something up, or fill in the blanks where there's nothing there to fill in. You know what I mean? Say, well, scripture this and that. Scripture is fantastic for most everything, but I found that. Christians have been real, very lax in spiritual warfare or the inability to get out of, you know, oppression and oppressing situations. Part of that might be from ignorance, you know, from not knowing what's out there. Saying we got, we got Christ, we don't need to know anything else. Well, yes and no. You know, I know one thing that churches I've attended, if you said that, let's say that you have a sibling that died and you talk to that sibling, they're going to tell you and they're going to get in your face and mind control you and brainwash you to make you think you never talked to that person. It was all demonic and there's no there there and to shut the F up. And after enough of that treatment, you are completely brainwashed, which is the purpose of the church. So there's no real help there, in my opinion. Uh, they're not consciously trying to hurt people. They think they're a force of good in the world. I mean, they could kill you and think, you know, they could kill a lamb of God and think they're doing God's service, you know, getting rid of all the uh, reprobates. So I understand the conundrum we're in. We're in a conundrum, you know, and I don't, I don't want to be, you know, I'm not that negative on the church. I mean, I've got lots of friends that go to church and I think that's fine. If God has led you to serve there, then you must be a very strong person. I'll, I'll just say that. Because if you know the truth and all this stuff, you know that your fellow, you know, members there do not know the truth or are discouraged from pursuing the truth, usually, right? And um, I also have to say that uh, the thing about the, the gang stalking, you know, that also is supernatural in a sense. It also deals with other dimensions. A lot of it comes from another dimension, not from a group of people somewhere that are cooking up something to do to you there is that too i'm just saying that that a lot of it is uh spiritual warfare and people that are very adept at spiritual warfare tend to be you know successful this stuff kind of falls away eventually people that have been programmed the whole mk ultra thing uh people that are triggered you know yeah at some point you have to acknowledge that you were hurt but the lord will heal you you know uh by and by as far as gang stalking with me, I just, you know, if it starts up or something, I just know I'm out of sync with God. I have to get back in sync. I have to pray. I got to praise the Lord. I have to get back in sync with God. That's my answer to 
gang stalking, but it's very similar to UFO abductions and things like that. And a lot of people have been abducted and the screen memory is the UFO and the alien. But I'm here, I'll tell you, these, these gray aliens, they do exist because I've had, I had it in my face. They do exist. There's a lot of people that don't think they exist. They're told in their churches, these don't exist. They're just these demonic, uh, you know, invisible entities. And if you see one, that's just a projection uh, of witchcraft. Well, it's all connected with witchcraft. Absolutely. You know, yes, the UFO and the witchcraft are synonymous. Along with all the occult things. But it's very vast in its development and very structured. And, um, you know, it, it, held, it holds captive most of the world's population is caught up in it. They don't even know. They're, you know, you, 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 you're born here. You, you know, let's say you believe the Truman Show your whole life. Well, then they have control over you your whole life as to where you're going to work, what you're going to do, who your wife's going to be, where you're going to go, who your friends are going to be, when you're going to die, when you're going to go to the doctor. All, everything is, you know, as per the schedule. And for people that that's all the discernment, that that's the level they're on, then that's the level they're on. They don't realize they're being used for something else. For those who believe it's an illusion or a simulacrum, uh, yes, but then <laughs> the inconvenient truth, God says, okay, but you need to go through this. Not just call it an illusion and, and uh, a mechanism and then just sit there in this, as a bump on a log, right? It requires proactive being proactive. The journey toward God is a verb. You know, you're journeying. You're, 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 you're moving. You know, God is never sitting still in a vacuum. Everything is moving. All the particles are moving. All the people are moving. And we do what we can do to be as God leads. A lot of times people say, well, will you pray for this or pray for that? And I'll inquire of the Lord before prayer. Some kind of times God says, no, that's not the right prayer. Pray, pray that my will be done with regards to this person who asked you to pray. Okay, Lord, I pray that your will be done in this person's life who's complaining to me about something they want fixed, so wanting me to pray for you to solve it. But now I realize, Lord, I need to pray and your will be done with respect to this person in Jesus' name, amen. And that's how it has to go. Sometimes the very thing that's happening to you that you want prayer for is God's will. That's what I mean about discernment. A lot of people say, will you pray for me? They go, oh, sure. And they just dive in without finding out what God's will is. Maybe, maybe my complaint is something that I have to go through. Maybe it isn't. But one thing is for sure, we do not live in a boring place. Things are not just boring. Things are not stupid. Very, very hard to catch on. But it's, you know, I know humans are special to God because we wouldn't have all this without there being humans to go through it. What good would it be for there to be Satanists only on this planet? Uh, well, something like that would not exist. And so therein lies the rub. And um, I will see you next time. I, I love you, praying for you. Oh, 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 I got a, a note from someone yesterday and I like to talk about these testimonies. Um, a, uh, it's all kind of foggy. You know, some of your emails I haven't been able to respond to. That doesn't mean I don't read them. And, uh, you know, because they, they, they pile up quite a bit. And, and so I want to apologize ahead of time and tell you, you know, thank you for listening. Thank you for dropping the note. I will get to it. I get like hundreds and hundreds of emails in a day. So sometimes if I go a day without being able to get to anything, um, it, it might be really down there, you know, by the end of the day and just kind of hard to find. And just don't don't get on don't jump on me for it. I'm I'm I love you. You know what I mean. I'm not gonna I'm not going anywhere. I'm just you know you're you, I didn't ignore you. You know what I mean. It just it's it just gets to be uh, hard for me. It's also you know not to complain, but you know my eyesight is it's I'm I'm um, challenged in being able to read 
uh, email, you know, unless I have my certain device, I'm a certain, you know, bit away from it. That's what happens when people age, you know, things happen like that. And uh, I am, you know, so, so please forgive me and I'm going to try to get to all of them that I can find. But one person wrote me and I'm going to paraphrase, I'm not going to say it literally, uh, that he gave his life to the Lord. After he'd been listening, he said to the podcast all day long, um, which means you're probably unemployed, right? You need a job, but, uh, uh, but that he gave his life to the Lord completely. And he wrote me to say that. And this was in a time I received that when I was doubting if I should even be here. You know what I mean? And I get a note like that and it's like, it's a good thing I showed up that day, you know? Because that's the most important decision you can make. If you've truly made that decision, my friend, you will never regret it. I mean, it doesn't mean you're gonna. It's it's gonna be a sleigh ride through, uh, you know, with Santa Claus right now. But it, it 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 you'll see that, you know, like me, there's no going back. You know what I mean? You start down that track, and and it's just it's a real track. And when people hurt you, and people do things to you, and when you perceive things, and when you wake up to things, you know, you know, you've got a place to go to the Lord in prayer to uh to find comfort and relief for the for the for the horrors of the world that you know befall you or get in your face or traumatize you or you know af- affect you you may find the next few weeks that if it's like me it'll be god will fill you in on a million mysteries that you you know that only god could know about you that will be revealed to you and 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 that that the lord has never forsaken you not one moment but knows every hair on your head and wants the best for you and wants the best for me so thank you for letting me know that, brother. You're, you're, uh, I pray for you continued fire, sustenance, everything in the Lord. Your continued journey in the Lord, in your belief in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is God. I pray for your success in Jesus' name. Amen. And I believe you will be successful. Isn't that wonderful? I know how that can really change a person. You know, it's like all this other stuff, you know, sciences and UFOs and, you know, the realm of the dead and all that. It's, it's there, you know, I've had my experiences, but I don't seek those experiences. You know what I mean? Cause, cause the Lord just has plenty on my plate, you know, just, just him is enough. And then if we happen to have experiences along with that, by all means, but we don't, you know, before 1991, I think I was seeking experiences cause I was seeking answers. So I found the answer and, uh, or as one person put it, you sound drunk with religious programming, which had cracked me up to no end. Yes, I'm drunk on God. I'm drunk on the spirit. I'm drunk with, you know, um, God's programming, if you will, God's mind. I'm drunk on his way. And, uh, I'm not really interested in, you know, rereading all the books that I read or, or being in the Shishi Intellectual Club. Uh, I'm interested more in John 17. And I think that is a good place. That's a good thing. Good, 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 good place to leave off on. And then we see you next time.